hear more from um, all of these people and more about their, their company and the solutions they provide uh, in a little bit here. And uh, Adrian, if you can move on, there we go. Um, so just a little bit about each of our companies before we get into it. Um, so SPS Commerce, uh, the, the firm I work for, we are a, a cloud-based retail supply chain service provider. Um, SPS has over 60,000 customers that utilize our services to either exchange EDI documents with their 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 customers and their trading partners or their third-party logistics centers. Um, then also to, we help them collaborate with their with their customers, uh, whether that's through analytics or for help, helping them get their products online. Um, our customers are typically wholesale distributors who are selling products or, or selling consumer goods into big box retail stores and selling their products online. Uh, that SPS network of 60,000 customers is built out in a multi-tenant architecture, which allows us to leverage those same connections over and over again, and really allows us to insulate our customers from having to know the requirements of retailers and, and the specifics of EDI or whatever those requirements might be. Uh, so that's a little bit about SPS. Um, a little bit about One Software Solutions. They are a gold development partner and an OEM partner of Sage Software. Uh, they specifically specialize in warehouse management and warehouse automation to help improve the picking and packing process of our customers within their warehouse. Uh, they offer the ability to use their service on your mobile device or on, on your, uh, your laptop or whatever it may be, and everything that, uh, that you do with them is tied right back into Sage software to be able to leverage the processes that you already do as far as managing inventory and things like that inside of Sage. Uh, next is V Technologies, and they are the makers of the product Starship, which you're going to learn a lot more about today, and, and they are also a Sage Gold development partner. Uh, Starship is a multi-carrier shipping software that connects uh, shipping with order entry, accounts receivable, and customer service to streamline the fulfillment process. Uh, they have the ability to ship both parcel and freight via a multi-carrier solution and, and can really benefit customers who need to rate shop and find out the best way to, to ship a particular uh, a set of goods. Uh, lastly is American Payment Systems. Uh, they're a full service uh, merchant ser services provider and it allows you to process transactions with all major credit card providers as well as debit cards and checks and, and, and really any way that you want to process a, a financial transaction. Uh, this certainly, uh, you know, having the ability to, to process transactions in any way really provides a lot of credibility to businesses and it empowers your customers to spend their dollars with you and really simpl simplify the way money changes hands between trading partners. Um, so that's a little overview of all of us, and, and I'll let these three other providers get into a little bit more detail about their companies and their services as we get on with the presentation. Um, so to start, uh, I just wanted to walk you through a, a high-level workflow of how our solutions contribute to the retail supply chain and really work together, all while being able to leverage the internal capabilities of your Sage software systems that, that you already own. So we'll take this workflow from receiving an order from one of your customers to fulfilling that order, sending a shipment and sending invoice information, and then actually receiving payment from your customers for that order. Um, so in this scenario, uh, the, the customer we're going to be speaking to is, is a wholesale distributor who's selling consumer products into retail stores, and you can see some of the retailers on the left, your, your Home Depot, your Targets, or, or some of the, the big box retail stores that you may shop at every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so so for, for this scenario, um, I'm in Minneapolis, so we're basically required to, to shop at Target if you live here. So we'll say that our customer is going to receive an order from a Target store or, or from Target to ship to their stores. Um, so, so to start, uh, you know, we're going to receive that order and SPS Commerce, who, who's built out to Target or any of these other retailers' requirements, we're built out to about 3,000 different buying organizations and retailers 
uh, we're going to receive this order from Target and we're going to populate that right into the sales order module inside of Sage 100. Um, and, and so this really allows you to leverage the current process you have of entering your orders into the sales order module if you were to do this manually today. Uh, but really we're able to automate that process so you, so you get notified that you have an order and you go to the sales order module and your order is already populated there. So uh, not only are we able to bring that order automatically into Sage without manual intervention, but we're able to validate the information on this order to make sure that the items order already exists in inventory within Sage, that customer codes are correct, that perhaps pricing is correct, um, basically making sure that the information on the order matches up to what you have in your ERP system to make sure that order comes in correctly. Uh, from here, you know, once you have the order in sales order entry and you know what, what your customer wants from you, uh, this is typically where our customers need to pick and pack their orders. Um, this is where one software solution comes in. Uh, you know, their mobile warehouse automation solution allows our customers to pack orders, scan barcodes right from their mobile device, whether it's a pick and pack process or a case pack process. Um, I, I won't steal uh, Cody's thunder, so I'll allow him to get into the specifics of it uh, in a little bit here. But this packing information that, that you're, you know, you're using from your mobile device ties right back into the shipping data entry module uh, to facilitate the creation of an ASN that you may need to send back to Target or whoever your retailer may be. Um, this along with the, with the information that SPS Commerce brought in on the sales order, uh, facilitates that that creation of the ASN and again in this creation of the ASN we're able to validate against the inventory module that you have within Sage to make sure all that item information is correct on that ASN where we're automatically creating for you. Once that ASN is created, this is where uh, Starship typically comes in. Um, and again, Caroline will walk you through Starship uh, in a few minutes here. But this is where customers have the ability to, to rate shop carriers, to get detailed information about shipment, including what was scanned, uh, email notifications, freight information. Um, again, I'll let Caroline get into the, the nitty gritty of the details here. Um, but, but once Starship has completed their cycle of of helping you pick a carrier and helping you rate shop uh, and, and figure out whether it's a parcel or a freight carrier or, or a freight shipment. Um, this this shipping information, like the tracking and like the tracking number, is populated back into ASN to, to finalize that creation of the ASN, so that we can send it back out to Target or whoever the customer is. Um, you know, th this uh, finalized ASN comes back through SPS Commerce's network, so that we can then provide it to your customer or to Target or whoever that may be in exactly the format they require. Again, uh, not, not requiring you to, to know the requirements and know the EDI standards of all your customers. Uh, so now that we've sent the ASN out of Sage through SPS Commerce, um, we need to create the invoice. Um, and, and we leverage the accounts receivable module inside of Sage to create this invoice. So similarly to the previous step where we use the sales order information to help create the ASN, uh, we're using the sales order information and the ASN information to auto create the, 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 the excuse me, the invoice for our customers. Um, so you have your invoice created within Sage and, and we allow you to, to leverage the process you currently do as far as posting invoices. So if you post your invoices once every couple hours or you post all your invoices at the end of the day perhaps, um, that posting of the invoice triggers uh, our outbound sending of that invoice to your trading partners. So the goal is to, to streamline the process you already have and not make you redesign a new, a new methodology. It allows you to post invoices like you do today. Um, and similarly to the other documents, the, the sales order and the ASN, we're able to validate this information to make sure the invoice you're sending out has all the required information that Target needs, is in the right format that Target needs. And if that's not the case, we're going to notify you that, uh, you know, this field is missing or this item is, is, is incorrect or, or whatever the case may be on that ASN or that invoice. So once we've, uh, we've triggered that invoice out and sent it on to your retailer, uh, this is where American Payment Solutions is going to come into the picture. Um, and it really allows our wholesale distributor to receive payment from their customer in a variety of ways, whether that be through credit card or through a debit card or through a check. 
um, they're able to process that payment to you typically within 24 hours. And, and again, here I'll let Patty get into the specifics of of what their what their services can do and the features of their solution. Um, but but again, this this really is all tied back into Sage 100, and our goal is to let you leverage the power of Sage 100 and the modules of the system you already own and process everything within your system of record. Uh, so that's really a, a broad-based overview of of what are, of what uh, uh, of what the total workflow looks like. Um, from here, I'll turn it over to Cody Smith so he can give you a, a behind-the-scenes look at One Software Solutions. Perfect. Thanks, Ben. That that was awesome, and I uh, definitely think gave everyone a great idea of what they can expect to see from all of us today. And, and once again, I want to personally thank everyone for their time as well. Um, so, like Ben was mentioning, you know, as we're going through these processes and taking the whole supply chain from the, the point it's coming in through SPS Commerce and uh, going through the warehouse, picking, packing that order, shipping it out through Starship, um, you know, back through the network, and of course, uh, collecting payment through APS. You know, we want to give you an idea of what are your users going to see? How is that happening? out in the warehouse, you know, especially on the, uh, the one software portion. So as, as a quick little intro, uh, one software is a, a solution that is offered on the Sage 100 platform that combines the leading warehouse management, uh, manufacturing automation, and uh, as well as warehouse automation. So with the combination of Scanco Warehouse running on your handheld, uh, multiple bin locations, uh, receiving items on the water, and a lot of advanced warehouse management inside of Sage combined with manufacturing. We're, we're able to offer a solution that is going to cover essentially every piece of your inventory uh, coming in through your work in process and on the way out for both distribution and manufacturing. Uh, today, obviously, we're focusing on that distribution. So we do have our Scanco warehouse software uh, that you're um, about to see. So with Scanco warehouse, we are a cross-platform application that operates on iOS, Android, and Windows Mobile. What you're seeing now is actually an, an iPod Touch connected uh, to our Wi-Fi network speaking with our demo system that's hosted in the cloud. So there's not a lot of requirements uh, that you may be familiar with back in the days uh, you know, where barcode was just really uh, taking off. With the uh, cloud-based applications, it's going to make a communication a lot faster and open it up to especially uh, those customers of uh, ours that have multiple locations. So first thing we're going to do here is going to uh, be the login. And we're going to go ahead and log into our system. Every user has their own login. So you can track what users are shipping, uh, which orders, how many orders they're shipping in a day. You have real-time capability to see that through uh, dashboards, through warehouse reporting. And when we're on the main screen, you'll kind of get an idea of the uh, how robust the system is. We are going to focus on the picking and shipping applications today, but you'll see we also have uh, the ability to bring that in through receiving, doing your physical count, transferring it. Uh, we have miscellaneous transactions such as pallet tracking, uh, manufacturing, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and go into our picking. And when we're in picking, there's a few different options. What we're focused on today is what's called order picking. And that's where I'm saying I want to pick one order at a time, and I want the system to guide me through the warehouse. The other option is wave picking, and that's where you want to pick more than one order at a time. Uh, you'll have the ability to scan in one, two, ten orders, however many you want and it'll group those orders together so you have the ability to walk through the warehouse once. Uh, for the demo today, we'll just go into our order picking. We tell it which warehouse we're in. We do choose a staging location, and this will operate uh, on standard Sage or Sage that's enhanced with the multi-bin solution, and the system will look the same. So we choose the staging location. I'm going to be putting that order in, and then we're scanning our sales order. So you have the ability to add barcodes to your crystal reports, let the user scan the order number that they're about to pick. They can also do a lookup that will display all of your open sales orders that are available to be picked. We'll go ahead and scan our sales order here. 
this gives me a quick rundown of what I can expect. It's telling me there's only one line on the order, it is in my warehouse, and I'm going to be able to pick one of those with sufficient quantity. So we go ahead and click OK. You'll see it actually guides me uh, based on the most efficient uh, path with our bin layout. In this case, it's telling me to go to E310 and scan that item. The great thing about the barcoding is it's going to catch mistakes. So if we walk up and scan a similar item, it's going to catch that and make sure we're scanning the right item to send to the customer. So we'll scan our item. It's telling me I need to pick 10. We'll go ahead and choose 10. And at the point that picking is completed, you'll see it tells me that everything's picked. Do you want to continue? So it knows that order, order's been fulfilled. It's now been sent to Sage, and the order's been picked. So with the order being picked, it's essentially being held in that staging location. And from there, we actually have to ship it out. There's two main ways to ship it out. There's kind of a very quick way that's called ship picked. And this is where we essentially have the ability to say, this order has been picked. I trust what's been picked is exactly what's leaving. And I can go in and see all of my picked orders. So every order you're seeing here has been picked. And I can choose an order and go ahead and submit that directly to shipping data entry. You can also go directly to invoice uh, if that's how your company's operating. Uh, but today we actually want to add a little bit more information in there. We want to have an extra scan and make sure that it's uh, the right items going out. So we're going to go into shipping. If you use batches on your shipping data entry, it will allow you to put in a batch number. Go ahead and scan my shipper ID. The sales order that's going out and the box number I'm starting with. So we have the ability to track the package level detail. So for this instance, we're gonna scan an item. And let's say that we put five items in our first box. And now you can hit next box, and now I'm packing box number two. So we scan the items. Once again, we do have the validation at this point. So it's telling me item not found in sales order, so I know something happened. And I wanna make sure that the right item's going into that box. Go ahead and scan the item. We'll go ahead and put the remaining five. And when you're in a shipping screen, on the lookup, it's going to show the remaining items you have. When I go in here, it's telling me there's no unresolved items left on the order. I know that this order has been packaged in full. So at this point, we can send that through, and it's automatically going to create the shipping data entry for that order 195. And when that happens, package level details put in, the order's been picked, it's been packed, and at this point is where Starship will actually pick up and process that. So right now I'm going to pass it over to Caroline, and she's going to walk you through the shipping portion. Great. Thanks, Cody. Um, so once you have um, picked your um, order using the ScanCo solution. Um, like Cody mentioned, all that information is being updated inside of Sage, and that enables Starship to access this order that Cody just processed. So um, for order number 195, I'm going to grab that. Um, I'm using an enhancement in Starship to grab the invoice document by the order number there, um, and Starship is coming up on, on screen with all the information about this particular shipment. So in the left-hand area here, you'll see some um, overview of the shipment detail. Um, you'll see that the um, ship via has been translated to UPS Second Day Air, so that's coming directly from um, the order. That the billing type here happens to be prepaid, and then the sender as well as the recipient. In this instance also, Starship has validated this address. Um, Starship has uh, validation for ZIP plus four as well as residential commercial. And then we also have um, secondary validation with UPS and FedEx for the residential um, checkbox. 
when we um, go into the shipment here, um, you'll notice that um, here's the shipment uh, details. Um, one of the things I like to mention here is that Starship does support um, the ability to email, um, branded emails, custom emails that you design inside of Starship, as well as support the carrier-provided um, emails. So in this instance here, I have my exception email, which would be coming from the carrier, set to go to the salesperson against this order. So if there's some reason that this shipment isn't going to make it to the customer in time, the salesperson can um, be notified and take the appropriate steps from a customer service perspective. Um, and I do not have the, the shipment notification set here because I am going to have Starship email this out um, with my um, branded email notification. In the um, packaging view at the bottom here, these are the packages that were defined using the ScanCo solution. Um, so Cody um, scanned five um, of each of these items into um, the boxes, so that's how Starship is coming up um, to display those, so that doesn't have to be manually entered by the shipper. Starship can also support um, multi-carrier, multi-mode, so a combination of both parcel and LTL carriers in one user interface. Um, Starship connects directly to the carrier's servers, so we're going to be able to access your negotiated rates. So if you have volume-based discounts, you'll see those reflected in the contract charges that are showing on the rate shop screen here. So in this case, um, my, my order had UPS Second Day Air noted here, but I'm also seeing that UPS Ground Freight will get it there at the same time for quite a bit less. So I can select UPS Ground Freight from here. I can also have um, package or rate shop scenarios set up in Starship um, to automatically select this UPS Ground Freight or any service um, that may get it there by a certain time um, in the least expensive way. So related to these charges, you'll see here, if I want to look at my entire shipment, um, that the list rate is 693, my contract rate is 124, and the applied freight, which is the freight charge that's going to go back into um, the invoice, is 485. Now this is using Starship's freight rules functionality, where you have the ability to define how and when the freight gets updated on the order. So in this case, I have a rule that decreases my, um, my shipment total by 30% when I have a freight discount field, a user-definable field set to yes or a checkbox inside of Sage. So your parameters or, um, for the logic can be based on your Sage fields or your Starship fields. Um, there's quite a bit of flexibility for the freight rules. In the case of um, you know, maybe like a trading partner such as Target, um, you, they may be um, asking you to bill their account and you may not write the freight charges back in that instance. Uh, so there's you know, a logic for freight billing as well as uh, freight write back in that case too. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and stick with UPS ground freight and I'm going to process the shipment. So all I need to do is hit F5 or press the um, ship process button here, Starship's going to generate the barcoded shipping labels and it's going to update Sage at the same time. So this is um, what you're seeing on screen now is an example of our smart label. It's basically a shipping label plus a packing list printed on 8.5 by 11 with a 4 by 6 inch die cut label up here in the corner. You can also print the label and packing list to thermal label printers um, so that the shipping label is followed by the packing list and then you'd simply um, stick the shipping label on the outside and put the packing list on the inside. You can also um, print the shipping label to a thermal and then print the packing list to a laser if you'd like. Okay, so those are the um, two shipping labels that went on the packages that Cody scanned using ScanCo, and then I'm going to go into Sage real quick um, just to show you how Starship updated the invoice that was created by ScanCo. So I'm just going to go into invoice data entry here, and I'm just going to go to the last invoice. That should be um, the invoice that for the order number 195 that Cody scanned in. Um, if you go to the tracking information, this is going to be all of the package information um, that was updated. So Starship will update the tracking numbers, the carrier, the freight charges. 
On the totals tab, you'll see the freight amount. This, again, is the applied freight. Um, so I was using freight rules here to determine what this freight amount is. And then I'm going to um, pass it over to Patty, who will be able to go through the credit card processing. Thank you, Caroline. And uh, it's trying to show my screen. Um, you can leave it on my screen because she'll be um, going through APS processing from. Can you switch it back to, to your screen? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Should be all set, Patty. Make sure I have control of the mouse here. Would you mind giving me control of the mouse once again, yep, Caroline? I did. Okay, I think we're set here. Let's see. Want to make sure I have the mouse control? I, I don't have the mouse control, Caroline. Try it again, Patty. Okay, here we go. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that don't already know me, my name is Patty Benitez, and thank you, Ben, for, for such a great introduction. Um, it's very helpful to see the transition from one of our companies to the other within Sage 100. It's so seamless. The end user experience is secure and less prone to human error because we're basically automating almost the entire process for you. And, and just to recap, I mean, it's really interesting. I just want to summarize what we've done so far. We received the order through SPS Commerce. Um, so as Ben said, we are accepting an order from Target, and they're actually placing that order within Sage 100 for us, so we don't have to manually key it in. Not only that, but uh, SPS Commerce will handle the ASN for you as well. And then Cody with the One Group and ScanCo is actually allowing us to scan the items. And uh, the pick pack functionality there just makes it so much easier for us. Once again, eliminating so many areas where we are prone to human error. And, and then finally, with Caroline, we're able to see the different shipping fees, the rate quotes, and we're able to verify uh, the different shipping fees there as well. All of this information and the reason I'm mentioning it is mainly because um, one of the largest benefits that American Payment Solutions has to offer is level three processing. And before I jump into a quick presentation, let me just um, let you know a little bit about American Payment Solutions. We have been in business for well over a decade. We have thousands of merchants processing through us nationwide, hundreds which are integrated to different ERP systems, Sage being Sage 100 being one of them, and um, we operate with Sage 100 version 4.4 and above. We also process not only in the United States, but Canada as well. We do not charge a module fee, maintenance fees. We provide installation, implementation, and training at no charge. Uh, PCI compliance assistance at no charge. Keep that in mind, please. And with that, I am going to go ahead and jump right into finally receiving the payment for the order that once again came in through SPS Commerce. Uh, the one group is scanning to pick, pack, and ship, and then Caroline is actually getting shipped out for us or taking care of the carriers for us, I should say. So we follow SAGE's guideline as far as the security settings and the user count that's allowed to access the credit card processing module. You're able to provide several different types of credit cards to the user, and the user can actually change the credit cards right within this, this screen, the sales order screen. You can pre-authorize or process a direct sale in this case, we have the default set to a direct sale because we're going to go ahead and accept the payment for the order that has been processed thus far. One of the customizations that we created is this email address under the billing address for the card. Any transaction that is processed within American Payment Solutions will be auto-emailing a receipt to this particular email address. I'm going to go ahead and submit the card at this moment. Once I click on the Submit button, you will see the APS Pays screen. We've created a custom modification that will allow you to turn on or off the requirement for a validation code. In this case, I am required to enter the validation code, but this can come in handy for companies that receive an order from the same customer 
five, six times a week or several times a day, you might want to turn this off so you don't have to keep keying it in every time. I'm going to go ahead and submit the card. And from this point this forward, oh, you, exactly, Caroline, you reminded me about paying the balance, you know. From this point forward, once you submit the card, let me just go back and see if I can submit the entire payment. But from this point forward, it's standard stage process where you're actually able to continue with your end of day update. Um, and once that update is complete, we're able to see the transaction completed within our portal. I'm going to go ahead and submit it one more time because I didn't submit it correctly the first time. So here we are. The APS window will appear. I'm going to go ahead and key in the validation code. Notice how it's referencing the invoice number and it'll show you the full amount of the invoice. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And we will go through verification of the zip code, for example, and notify you if, if there is no match. In my case, I'm not matching the zip code with my credit card. And it will also validate the CVV code for you. Once that is complete, then we will see that the credit card transaction is complete. And at this point, we can go ahead and continue with the, the Sage update process. Please excuse the fact that I don't have my crystal setting properly here. Okay. And while this is going on, let me just tell everybody a little bit about level three processing. Not too many people are familiar with it and not too many people are taking advantage of it. Level three processing basically entails the fact that corporate purchase card transactions are priced differently from consumer credit card transactions. Getting the best rate for corporate purchases requires additional line item details on each transaction. Because so many additional data is required, most merchants accepting level 3 transactions integrate payment processing into their ERP systems to eliminate the manual entry of these line item details. At American Payment Solutions, we've already integrated our level 3 gateway into Sage 100, as well as several other widely used ERP systems. Our PCI compliant security solutions feature point-to-point -point encryption, tokenization, and our APS pays vault, eliminating card data that typically would be stored on a local server. We also walk our merchants through the PCI compliant self-assessment questionnaire. I'm sure at least once in your lifetime you've gone through this nightmare where you're not able to pass it. Well, we'll, we'll definitely be able to assist. So we eliminate the non-PCI compliance fee that most people are paying on a monthly basis. What exactly are the benefits of Level 3 processing? Merchants who process Level 3 transactions save money with lower interchange rates than that available for Levels 1 or 2. In addition, they receive detailed reporting that allows them to track transactions from beginning to settlement. Level 3 transactions typically cost the merchant 0.5% to 1.5% less and I'm underlining less for you because this is exactly the lower rate you would be receiving than the standard level one transaction, amounting to, of course, a huge savings for B2B companies. Talk about a test company here. I have to just mention the very first company that ever came to that ever came to American Payment Solutions um, was gave me their statement as a test, and they basically said, "Look, we're not going to be switching." We're not going to be switching at all. Um, why don't you just take a look at it and, and let us know whether or not you can do something. We analyzed their statement. They were not processing through level three. And what happened at that point was we were able to, stay, to show them the level three processing. And it added up to $112,000 per year. Needless to say, when the CFO saw that amount, he basically sign the contract right then and there. I mean, no questions asked. Sorry about the delay here with the, with the printing. So APS makes qualifying for level three processing completely effortless to our merchants by automating the delivery of 13 to 16 required fields by Visa and MasterCard in order to qualify these transactions for level three. These additional data fields include merchant name, address, invoice number, tax amount, plus line item details such as description, quantity, unit of measure, freight amount, and commodity and product codes. I know it gets really cumbersome, but you don't have to worry about it as an end user. The extra reporting, of course, will also make it easier for corporate and government customers to monitor and track internal spending. So keep in mind, if you are not already processing level three, if you're not familiar with that term, 
give us the opportunity to review your merchant statements and provide you with a free merchant analysis. No strings attached, I guarantee it. And you will see, I guarantee, a, a huge savings compared to what you are processing right now. Thank you, Caroline. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the portal just to show you how this transaction will look within the, FPS, the APS portal. And I will be writing. So what you see on the screen right now is the American Payment Solutions Portal. If you're ever, um, for some reason, kicked out of Sage 100 and you need to process a credit card transaction as an emergency, you can definitely process it through the portal and later um, you can enter the data into Sage 100. Notice how the transaction we just processed has been approved it will indicate an invoice number and it will also give you a transaction ID number. This transaction ID, once you click on it, you're able to see details regarding the transaction. And then back in Sage 100, you could also reference the transaction or cross-reference, I should say, in case of a return because the transaction ID will also show up in your Sage 100 invoice. And I'm just going to show this last piece, Caroline and... Uh, Cody, Ben, if there's anything that you would like to talk about, please feel free to do so at this time. Yeah, this this is Ben. Thank you for that, Patty. Um, I, I think the only thing I would want to reiterate is on the invoice side that that as we mentioned, uh, you know, processing your invoices back out to your trading partners all happens through your current process, where once you post your invoices at the end of the day or whatever you may do so that triggers the outbound invoices um, you know once those are sent you can still view all your invoices in invoice history and resend them if need be um, we can also tie all these documents that you're processing to paperless office if that's something you're using and again all of that is tied back into accounts receivable to make sure your records stay up to date and complete because uh, we all know the most important part of this process is actually making sure you get paid so that's uh, we want to make sure we make that easy for our customers Excellent. Uh, Caroline, would you mind just showing the quick chart of the level three processing document requirements? This is just so you can get an idea. I highlighted several areas where um, SPS Commerce and uh, the One Group Scanco and, and Caroline uh, Starship would uh, directly be affecting level three processing. They actually verify data for us. These are the fields that Visa and MasterCard are requiring. And as I, as I mentioned before, APS automates the process for you where we actually pull this data from the ERP system. It's verified and confirmed using ScanCo, using Starship, um, working with SPS Commerce and getting the purchase orders into Sage 100. All of this data is confirmed and therefore you don't have to worry about a thing. We pre-qualify each transaction and find out whether or not it is level three compatible or not. Thank you, Caroline. And Adrian, I think we can open up to questions. Thank you, Patty. Great presentation, everybody. Um, we do have quite a few questions, and I would like to um, show my screen of the contact information while we're announcing these questions. So bear with me here. There we go. You should all see the contact information of each of the presenters today. Um, I do have a poll I would like to launch while we're announcing quite a few of these questions. So let's go to the polls. Okay, that one's not working. Let me pull up this poll. Here we go. If you could just um, answer this poll for us, which Sage 100 add-on applications are you currently using? You can select one or more of the following. Um, so whichever ones you're using, it would be great if we could get an idea of, the, of how uh, all these applications are working for you in the audience. And we do have a question here. If you turn off the entry of the validation code, 
is that done customer specific? For example, we have customers that pay weekly with credit card, but we would not want it off for a walk-in customer. So maybe Patty? I'm sorry, Adrian. what was the question again? Um, if you turn off the entry of the validation code, is that done in the, in, is that customer specific? For example, we have customers that pay weekly with credit card, uh, but we would not want it off for a week in customer. I think he um, indicated walk there, but I think he meant week. I believe it's a universal change, so you would have to either turn it on or off, and it's, it's completely universal. And who do we contact if we want a review of our merchant statement? Thank you, Tobetta. Oh, definitely please feel free to contact Patty Benitez. Um, my email is pbenitez at apsmerchants.com. Um, and I know Adrian's going to put up our contact information at the end as well. I am. And we have 61% of you who voted. If I could get that number higher, that would be awesome. And we have a question from Alex. Alex is asking, let's see, I have to go to my other screen for my mouse stopped working. Will the presentation be available? I am interested in getting some of the other decision makers at the company involved. Thank you, Alex. Yes, uh, I did record this presentation. And I will be sending out the recording afterward to everyone who registered and attended. So we uh, thank you for that question and coming to see the solutions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and launch another poll, if I may. I'm going to close this poll out and share the results real quick just for curiosity. It looks like 4% of the audience is using one software solution. 30% of you are using Starship. 15% SPS Commerce, um, and 52% of the uh, audience are not using any of the solutions above. So with that said, I'm going to hide that one and then ask you just one more poll. And if I could get the audience to answer this poll, that would be great. Are you interested in learning more about any of the following? And you can check all that applied to that. And then I'm going to splash the contact screen up again. I'm going to look at the questions here. What minimum level of items shipped is break even for Sage 100? Caroline, I believe that one's for you. Is it? Um, I, I don't know if I completely get the question or the reference from the question. There's more of it. Let me uh, <laughs> okay, <thanks>. complete. <laughs> <laughs> is the Starship software compatible with third-party logistic companies? Um, Starship does support um, one uh, 3PL known as FreightQuote, um, but we've really um, gone in the direction of supporting carriers directly, um, and we've expanded our direct LTL carrier connections to have um, over two dozen direct LTL connections. Um, basically, our direction has been um, prompted by requests from our customers. Our initial release of our LTL LTL solution was only with 3PLs, and um, it seemed that many of our customers were able to negotiate better directly. So we um, worked on 
putting resources into adding direct LTL carrier connections. And um, so that's what you'll see in Starship. If you still wanted to um, have your shippers go through a uh, similar workflow with their parcel and freight and you're using a 3PL, we do have a user-defined LTL module which will allow you to um, define any number of SCAT codes in order to automate the BOL printing as well as um, the updating of the Sage 100 document. Okay, and then there has been more additional info added to this question, Caroline. I don't have contracts with LTL carriers anymore. I use a company that has huge buying power, and they have the contracts with the carriers. Carrier, not my company. I don't know if you have anything yeah. else to add. Yeah, no, that's exactly, I mean, that was a similar situation as we had with freight quotes um, when we opted to, you know, go with the, the direct carrier mod model. So, um, yeah, Freight Quote is the only one. I don't see us um, supporting other 3PLs, although if you have a 3PL that you're interested in Starship supporting and you'd like us to quote that out separately as a development project, definitely get in contact with me and we can discuss it. And, and uh, this one, oh, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, this is Ben. On the 3PL comment, um, I, ju I just want to say that if customers are using a 3PL, 3PL to either warehouse their goods or, or ship their goods, uh, SPS Commerce has a logistics team that works directly with 3PLs and we're able to route EDI documents, whether it's orders or ASNs or, or whatever the requirement might be, to and from 3PLs and, and then get those required documents back to the retailers in, in the required format. If, you know, for some reason you need the, the 3PL to see what the order is and handle the pick pack and ship process and, and ASN back out um, you know the we are able to offer that functionality as well and we've got another question here it looks like uh, for Patty can you have unique credit cards stored for one customer for each unique ship to we have customers with thousands uh, plus ship twos each with a unique credit card Ooh, that's a great question. I'd have to look into it, but um, and I, I will be able to get back to you right after the webinar. But I, I definitely have to look into it. I apologize. I don't know the answer to that question. Thank you, Frank, for that question. We will take that one offline and get that answer to you. I am going to go ahead and oh, there's another question here. It looks like please ask if. Um, okay, so let's say, does APS handle other processors cancellation fees? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, we absolutely do handle um, any cancellation fee from Sage Payment Solutions, and depending on the volume, we will also pay for a percentage of a cancellation fee from other processors. I do want to mention the fact that we also provide assistance with data migration from these other processors so you don't have to rekey in all of your credit card information. And we guarantee our rates in writing. So you don't have to be afraid of any rates creeping up in the middle of your contract. Um, if we're not able to beat or match the other processors' rates, we will pay you $500, no questions asked. And I've got some pretty solid results to our poll up there, but we're still at 67%. If we could get more of the audience just to answer that poll, I'll show everybody the results. I know you're on the edge of your seat. And then let me take a look at the questions. Make sure there's no more. I think I got most of the questions. And then um, if... If we want to acquire a number of your solutions, how do you work together for implementation? Do you work quite fre frequently together? Yeah, um, I can go ahead. Yeah, it, to answer that question, it, yes, we actually work together a lot, uh, which is why you know we do these webinars together. Um, each solution does have its own implementation team. Uh, however, we do uh, communicate with each other and uh, can assist you and your reseller uh, in the best process and the best timeline to implement the products all at once. And you referenced a customer who saved 392 hours with this solution. Would you be able to share the customer name with us? 
And I believe you guys, that was a Mad Dog Solutions. Yeah, we had, this is Caroline. Um, I think that that was based off of um, a, a previous webinar that we did with a customer success story who was using um, our combined solutions in their warehouses. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll and share the results. It looks like uh, the audience is interested, 56% of the audience is interested in learning more about one software and 44 Starship. 32% SPS Commerce, 24% APS, and 24% uh, are just learning more at this time, um, so no immediate interest. I'm going to hide the results of this poll and then show the contact information. So that should be showing on my screen. Are you guys seeing the contact information? Yeah, we can see it, Adrian. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so with that said, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We do know that uh, your time is hard to come by, and we really appreciate you spending it with us. And uh, if there's it, no other questions, I'm going to just look really quick, see if there's any last-minute questions. Um, is the Starship software compatible with third-party logistic companies? I don't have contracts with LTL carriers anymore. I think I already um, announced that question. I just want to make sure. Just taking a look just to make sure I got all these questions. And Adrian will be sending out the recordings and the presentation, and uh, all of our contact information is included there as well. So if anybody has questions that they think of um, after the fact, um, you can always reach directly out to each of us, and um, we'll try to get your questions answered. Thank you, Caroline, for that. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, did Cody, Ben, Patty, would you like to um, share any closing remarks? I would just like to thank everyone for for the uh, their participation and for attending and allowing us to present our solution and remind everyone that we are happy to provide with a free merchant analysis of your current rate and again if we can't beat or match we will pay you the five hundred dollars thank you so much everyone have a great afternoon oh and Patty I did have one question for you I wondered if you had any you know uh, success stories that stand out in your mind where you've converted somebody from maybe like an Intuit or a Sage bill pay uh, service um, that you've been able to save an exorbitant amount of money. I, I just wondered if uh, you had any examples of that. I do. As a matter of fact, Caroline is one of our, our strongest customers and advocates. Caroline, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about your <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we use APS um, in-house here. We integrate it directly to our orders and to our shopping cart. And um, you know, we've seen we liked the transparency of the APS solution. They, um, as Patty said, they tell you um, a price and they stick with it. There's no questions, um, and they're really able to to get you some savings from the credit card processing fees that so many of us are trying to reduce. Perfect. Thank you, well, well, on that note, everybody, enjoy your weekend, and thank you so much once again, and we'll hopefully see you soon on the next webinar. Take care. Okay, bye, guys.